Yeah, you can take those, and then there's a board if you want to do the board. Wait, what about the pencil? There's two. Mm, go. Okay. They give you a map at the entrance that says, this is history, this is adventure, this is Arizona. And here's the map. Every, everything is numbered, so they recommend you... They recommend you visit all this in number order. And the one I'm looking forward to is the governor's mansion. But first we're going to number one, the John and Helen Law. But first we're going to number one, the John and Helen Lawyer Exhibit Center. Which is just. <clears throat> all right, and it's this, it's this building. That's cool. Right. Which Hold on. First is the prehistory of West Central Ar First is the prehistory of West Central Arizona. So it might be about like a mammoth and stuff like that. Well actually I don't know if they, if they have mammoth. Yeah, mammoth. Wait, it's called a mammoth. It's called a mammoth. Oh then we can bye. All right, one, two, three, cheese. Right. Oh, I thought that was a real person. I thought that was a real person. Okay. Oh, you fell it? Oh, tell the camera what you're doing. I'm doing the scavenger hunt. There are two scavenger hunts that you can pick up from the entrance. There's a picture and a word. So I'm doing, I'm doing I think here's where a lot of the words are. Maybe. Oh, prehistoric acts. Oh, okay. All right, and I go. Oh, wait, what is this? Oh, okay. These are. These are these are all ancient animals, but I think wait, these two are Ice Age survivors. Get rid of everything from there. And the first American sub natives. Is that is that really what they wore? Wait, that guy looks like he uh, he's using a wand. Dumbled. Lily? I'll tell you what, young man, you're on the right track. If you keep walking into there, look in the far corner. Is that? Look the corner. Up here. Oh, that one. Is it here? You found it. Wait. Good job. Wait. All right, and go. This is the prehistoric axe. It's on the treasure hut. Or scavenger hut. It's on the scavenger hut. Toys. Oh, set and go. This exhibit is on toys. Oh, see so our line. Ah, creepy doll.
Alright. Oh, boop boop can tell. Right, and go. They have interactive exhibits. They have interactive exhibits. I don't know what says. They have interactive exhibits and you can use the hand sanitizer when you're done. Okay. They have they have Monopoly just for Prescott. Huh. These are probably all the shops in town. Uh, yeah, go. This this map of Arizona is so cool. Right now we're in Prescott over there. It's Prescott, not Prescott. I I keep having to Prescott. remind myself that. Right. And then we've been to many places like Tucson, Phoenix, and Ajo is where we almost got the speeding ticket. Are you mention this picture? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh. The best part is that by the Yuma space, it says go to jail because Yuma is like a prison town, or it used to be. Anything else here? Governor, here's the governor's mansion. It was built on site in 1864 and housed the first territorial governor, John Goodwin. Okay. This was the governor before. This was a governor before Arizona. Became, governor building. Uh, no, the governor's house. Right? Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I was. This oh, is the person. Yeah, okay. I was talking about the person. Okay. John Goodwin was the governor before Arizona became a state. probably seen you know like this okay so if you needed a copy of it in those books below there would be sheets of blank paper and you would dampen them do you know what it means to dampen? Oh, so it's like 160 years old and there's another one in the other room that's that old too but it didn't always look like it became somebody's house uh, boarding house so it changed over time but then our founder Charlotte Hall decided, let's this at that time. Do you know what this is used for? Okay. This is the safe. Isn't that heavy? What do you think you put in is there? It heavy? It's not, well, the door is not too heavy, but I'm sure this is super heavy. Yeah. What would you put in a safe? Back in 1865, what do you think they'd put in here? Uh, I don't I don't know. You would put your valuable things. So there could be gold, oh, there yeah, could be jewelry. Money. But this was also the governor, he had important papers. And then the governor lived on the loft upstairs. So, these were some people who had lost over a hundred years or more. You know, this room wasn't always a room. It used to be the stable. Uh, where do you put where the stable was? And that's what's right in there. Oh, yes. And there used to be a kitchen right here. And it's not here anymore. Okay. It's, it's gone. This is this is a model of the original. Probably. This is the model of the original, right. And this shows some of the tools that you use. Well, you know what? Back up were. Yeah. So there were just animals, but probably not where the animals were. See they Okay. When we became a territory. Uh, All right. Uh, what should I say? Bye. Look here. One, two, three. Cheese. Still one here? Face this way. Uh, a little bit more so you don't cover the bed. Alright, ready? Look here. One, two. Oh, let me step back. 
Alright, one, two, three, chee. That's the room where the governor lived. This is a pantry. And in that room, it was a, what? And that room over there used to be a horse stable. So it was, so, so they added that part to the house later on. Why is it called a mansion? Oh. It's because the oh. other people lived in tents or something. Oh, you found something? Mm -hmm. That's oh, why you look. Oh, you want to tell the camera you found that item on the screen? I got a, I found another item. One more. So there was a sign inside saying, well, why is this called a mansion? Apparently everyone else back then used to live in like huts and wait. Apparently everyone else back then used to live in huts and tents. Okay. It's Tell not me. like a historical. All right. Next is the Charlotte Hall building. Railway? Oh, did they have railways? Yeah. Don't look at my movie house. It's off the wagon. Please don't tell me it is. Oh, it is. I found the chuck wagon. That's the last one. This is a map of... This is a map of the early central... This is a map of the early Central Arizona Railroad. And it seems like everything leads to Prescott. If I say Prescott, I'm sorry. That's just what it, the spelling. Okay. All right. Oh, a couple. This is a chuck wagon meal. Oh. That's General store? How do you do this? Right? How do you? Press it down. Just press one. Oh. Wait, let well, Calvin test. Here, take Calvin. It's fine. Oh. Just, just, just grab it. No sale. Close it. Huh, I'll close it and then when you open say tell us. Oh, never mind. You can lock. Oh uh, yeah, you can. Oh you can. go you can open it and make sure Calvin says ta -da. Okay. Try to make it quick then. Two, one, go. Did we trap him in there? Transportation. Yeah, school bus. Oh yeah. no, oh, under another school bus. Uh, no. Under the school bus, there's another car. This? No, modern. Oh, that. I I didn't see a car.
Entering the ranch house. Whoa. Oh. Music, st music started playing when we entered. This is the ranch house. Are those potatoes? Wait. They, so they hung food up there? Dried fruit. Uh, okay. They hung dried fruit up there? Kept their horseshoes. I don't know what those twigs or plants are. Is it rosemary or? I don't know. Here's the here's the cooking place. Is there any description on the map? Oh. Yep. This building represents all of the ranch homes in the area. Wait, in the 1930s? Yeah. Okay. This. No, let me do this one. So let me see. Uh, and go. This building, rep this building represents a general ranch home in the 1930s. The next one is the Fort Misery. Misery? No, Misery. Whoa, look. Fort oh. Misery. Oh, tell the camera. It's a Fort Misery. Misery, like oh, misery. sadness. Oh. This is the Fort Misery. Okay. Wait, what's the description? Why is it called Misery? Oh, let's see. Fort Misery is an old surviving log building in Arizona. It's built on banks of granite creek. Two blocks south of Fort Preston, today Charlotte Hall. It doesn't really say. It's just a surviving log building. Uh, go. Fort Misery is the oldest log cabin in Arizona. It was built half a mile and moved away. Fort Misery is the oldest log cabin. Fort Misery is the oldest log cabin in Arizona. It was built half a mile from here and moved. This served as the first many things in Arizona, including law office and courthouse. <laughs> and wait. Oh, the top log. Oh, okay. And the doors are low so that the cabin can stay strong. Whoa. This is this is my perfect height. This is not my perfect height. Uh, listen here. Oh, look, this, how, look, how, look how small this door is. Now, this is about I know. Right? One, two, three, cheese. One, two, three, cheese. I don't know either. There's a schoolhouse anyway. Number four. Oh, it's coming. The schoolhouse in 1962 replica of the first public schoolhouse in the Arizona Territory, built in Prescott. In Prescott. It's Prescott. 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 Prescott.
locksmith is not on here. But. Okay. Uh, this is the blacksmith shop. In 1880, a 60-hour work week. Oh, uh, what? This is the blacksmith shop. In 1880, a person who worked for 60 hours a week got $15 a week. Yeah. Right, one time. I thought in context. Yeah, right. Okay. This is the blacksmith shop. In 1880, a blacksmith who worked 60 hours a week earned $15 a week. That, okay, so 7, 8, and 9 are on the other end. Okay. Is this on the list? No. Hold on. I'd give this five star if it was a kid. I can't tell. Wait, is this even a bit? Oh, this is the Fremont House. Okay. Hold on. It's the 5th Territorial Governor. Jo John Charles Fremont. Okay. This is the home of John Charles Fremont, the 5th ter- This is the home of John Charles Fremont, the 5th Territorial Governor of Arizona. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hello tell you a little bit about this house and how I'm interested in. First of all, the guy that lived with Willie, you have transoms. Transoms, you can open and close these. So when it was very hot in the day, they would uh, I got a guess? You got a guess? Is that like beads? No. Not... What do you think of Oh bro. It's made out of your hair. And this was very common in the latter part of the 19th century, or early part of the 19th century. It's not a, a re reproduction or anything. This is a, see, although we have kitchen equipment over there, the kitchen and the maid were back here. And then Frank, the son, had this as his bedroom. Wait, that's a kitchen? Yeah, they had kitchen. Solid? Uh, not completely. Well, it seems a little hollow. Or I don't know. Let me show you something about this house. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. You know we we use plasterboard. We use uh, plaster. Mm -hmm. There is no frames in this house. There's no plaster in this house at all. It's all built out of wood. Mm -hmm. And here's the way they built it. They cut ponderosa pine logs into planks, about one inch thick. And they yeah. Now this used to be Lily's bedroom, and they didn't do wallpaper when you were when you were wealthy at that time. You could get gives you kind of like the old three D pictures. Wait, is this of this house? Whoa! <laughs> wow. Oh, I see. Yeah. And make it go down. You see it? Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. okay. I like how in I like how in all the buildings there's either an audio tour or an actual tour guide to give you a tour. There were some really interesting things we learned. Like they made a they made a they made a lot of things out of hair. Each of the rooms had a door with one of those window panels since it got hot in the summer. Uh, there's no closets, so they had there's no closets, so they had less room, so there was less tax and a lot of other cool stuff. Won't be yeah. All right, All right, just one minute. Let's just tell us what this is. Okay. This transportation, what? What's it called? Bye. Right. right. This is the transportation building. There's a lot of antique vehicles. Right. Right. Is this just a museum shop? Uh, go. Lastly. Okay. Wait. Lastly, the bath. 
Lastly, the Bashford House is an example of a Victorian home 25 years before statehood. Okay. Hi. Look, you have a paper. Uh, oh, you can set one step up, Koko. I'm Didi, so you're. St Didi. No, 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 Didi. Okay. Yeah, so you're equal. Uh, Alright, right, go. Alright, go. And that is the Charlotte Hall Museum. Wait. And that is the Charlotte Hall Museum, which had a lot of. And that is the Charlotte Hall Museum, which had a lot of historical buildings and exhibits about the territorial area. My, fa oh. my favorite building was the... Oh, I got that. Say that again. Okay. My, fav my favorite building was the Governor's Mansion. And what was the other Governor one called? And my building was the Fremont House, which was the fifth governor's home, because that one had a lot of interesting items and a great tour guide. Okay, wait, hold on. And then oh, uh, overall uh, thoughts. Overall, this museum, overall, the Charlotte Hall Museum is way better. Wait. Overall, the Charlotte Hall Museum is way better than I expected. It's probably one of my favorite historical museums, just because of how organized the map is, and it took us to so many and it took us to so many cool buildings. The tour guides were helpful, and the tour guides were helpful, and I learned history of Prescott. What's so funny? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. On to the next stop. Go to the sign. And go no. Our first stop is the Charlotte Hall Museum. Next stop, and final stop. Our next stop is the Charlotte Hall Museum. Our last stop is the Charlotte Hall Museum. Now we're at? Now we are at the Charlotte Hall Museum. Okay, I'm gonna try not to. What's a <laughs> a bingo game mm -hmm. and what you do when you see things you mark them off okay. that you okay. found the items and then when you have them all done there's a prize okay. does that look like fun okay. you're welcome uh -huh. thank you yeah just hold the camera you get to hold the museum of indigenous people but i should start this off correctly uh and introduce myself in the right way oh see you Manuel Lucero, uh, I said was hello, my name is Manuel Lucero, I'm from the Cherokee Nation of Oklahoma, and I am the executive director here at the Museum of Indigenous People in Prescott. Um, you guys ever been to a Native American museum before? I think so, yeah, in right, California. Southwest, but we do talk about other people and other tribes. Can any of you guys tell me how many tribes are in Arizona? How many federally recognized tribes are in Arizona? Uh, 15, 20? There are 22. Okay. There are 22 tribes here in Arizona. Uh, the land you're standing upon right now uh, belongs to the Yavapai people. I don't care what your deed says or your lease or whatever, this is Yavapai land. Um, archaeologists of old used to call this the ugly pottery because it wasn't as pretty as some of the other bowls and pots and things that uh, you might find digging around in your back. The reason why you'll find the pretty stuff next to this grayware, as we call it, um, is because the folks here would trade. And what two types of red pipestone, argillite being one and catalyte being the other. 
And so there's only two places on the planet where red pipestone is found. One of them is Pipestone, Minnesota. The other one is right here in Yavapai County. Chino Valley, as a matter of fact. And you have this wonderful stone that you can carve into anything. It can become jewelry. It can become uh, pipes for smoking. It can become all kinds of things. Because it's, it's this guy right here. Now look at this cup. That's not much different than you might find in your own cupboard at home, right? Do you know what those designs are inside that cup? Uh, is that like rattlesnake skin? No, that's pretty good though. I like that you also thought of as aphrodisiac. So that's why women get pottery at all. It's this guy right here. Can you tell me what those impressions are in that jar lid? What is that? Is that dinosaur? Wait, no. no. That's oh, corn. Corn. oh, corn. Oh, it says corn. Yes, <laughs> oh. corn. So corn impressions in there. And the reason being, they get a pot not too different than these guys. They pack it full of, full of corn, and then take the clay mud and right. Looking at an ancient Tupperware. Hmm. You guys know what Tupperware is? Deal too. So in order to hunt, you had to be able to make these tools, right? Like arrowheads, projectile points, spearheads, knives, scrapers, all kinds of cool stuff. Drill bits to make jewelry. But in order to do that, you had to know how to craft them. So you get a piece of material, not unlike that volcanic glass right there, obsidian. Yeah. And you knock it with a hammer stone. Boom, you pull a big chunk off. And you hit it again and you get a nice piece that's workable, like these guys. And then you chip away at it, starting with these antlers here, and taking the smaller flakes off. And eventually you get it broke down. You might mess up once, twice, three times. You use a bigger point like this one here, or maybe your enemy. Mm -hmm. So, arrows typically, you can see the length of this guy. Now this has a technology in it that goes back to the Ice Age, but typically your arrows weren't all that long. So from where the knock is in the back to the end of the shaft, it's only about holes and things. Do they make jewelry out of this material too? You could. Um, the thing is, that's tools. Now look at this big guy. Right, it's got a point that comes down, has little grooves in the back, little grooves on the side, little knocks to, to tie and lash down with some sort of a rope or string, right? That's not an arrowhead at all. That's the leg to a sofa. <laughs> that one's kind of cool because it still has the resin all over it. That knife. Mm. No knife. Not yet. I am that good. You know. So we know that native people cultivated food. We know this 61%. Just think about corn by itself. Corn. What does corn do? Corn consumer of turkey. Remember, turkeys are indigenous to the Americas. Is it so, America? No, not even on Thanksgiving. Okay. Now, this clamon is, is pottery. What you do is you heat up on the bottom, as you can see those young ladies doing there. Grind with the corn, make a, a mush out of it or moss out of it, put it down flat, it cooks, you flip it over, and you serve it like a bread to eat with your food. Tortillas. But the comal is still something being used today. When we did go hunting, we all the animal spirit that we take its life. We should go around. Oh, yeah. See that guy before? Mm. You recognize him? No. No, you never seen that guy before? No. <laughs> <laughs> so my pants, each one of the leggings in my pants is one deer, one buckskin. Um, my moccasins are made from elk, particularly this area in the chest because it's very, very thick. And a pair of deer skin moccasins only last me one dance season because they're so thin, with holes in the bottom of them. But I wear the elk and I get three good dance seasons out of them. Right now, I should have replaced them already. There's a big layer of traditional duct tape. Always <laughs> on right now. My belt is made from buffalo hide. My aprons are of wool that we trade with our Navajo friends because they all hurt sheep. We, my, uh, we had cotton as well, as you can see here. So my shirt is made from cotton that my wife made me. Um, the necklace I'm wearing is bear claws. And the headdress I have on is made from porcupine guard hair. 
So the long skinny hairs in between a porcupine's quills is called guard hair. And we very carefully harvest that hair from a porcupine. Uh, off the side of the road over here on Highway 89. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so, so you hunted some of the animals? Or? Yes. Uh. As a matter of fact, this legging here, which is kind of hidden behind where it's dropped down, the bullet hole where I shot the deer through on both sides, one is on the front of my shin and it goes out the calf side <laughs> on my pants because to have uh, eagle feathers. And if I get caught with an eagle feather without this card in my wallet, it's $10,000 for every feather and possibly 10 years in jail. So I keep my card on me all the time <laughs> so that I don't get in trouble for having them. But we're allowed to have them for ceremony and religious reasons. Um, okay. Of a moccasin. You see the deer toes coming out of there? Why do you think they put deer toes sticking out of the bottom of the moccasin? Why do you think they did that? Traction. Traction, absolutely. Traction with snow and ice. What you're looking at is a thousand, usually and kept by the women in the household. You know, like, now, if you just had one, you just hold man, I just picked it up right there. I thought it was a pigeon. It's the ones on the ends, here and here. Can you tell me the difference between those two? Um, this one on the end and this one on the end. Is right. it the thing that the, bow, the long bow is made out of? The, the shaft? No, the shafts are made of the same material. Well, what's the difference between the two? I can't tell. Okay, one of them is painted, right? Oh, oh, okay. And also, arrow, and this is a war arrow. And I'll, I'll tell you why. This one is fleshed out with wild turkey feathers, right? This one has golden eagle. This one is very plain and uncarved and unpainted. This one has a lightning bolt carved into it. So it strikes quick and deadly, like a bolt of lightning. He also painted it red to bring victory and success in battle. Then he painted the tip black to bring death to his enemy. He wanted to make sure that this arrow did its job, as opposed to the hunting arrow, which is more common, more frequently made. This one, he combined his art and his spiritual beliefs, his religion, into an everyday practical item, right? So to most native people, there is no separation of church and state. Every day is a holy day, every day is a sacred day, and all things are sacred to us. And how that is done is when you are making a bow, you go up to the tree, and trees have concentric rings, correct? That's how you can tell how old they are. So every year a new ring is added to the tree. So what you do is you scrape the bark back and you cut into the tree about three or four rings deep. And then you pull out your blank and it's just a blank shaft and all your grain is running on the side. Then you smoke it and shape it, wet it, smoke it, shape it, wet it, smoke it, shape it until you get the size and shape of the bow you want. Now, so a pony bow like this, um, made proper ring, you're probably gonna get a nice 45 pound, foot pounds out of it. Oh, to the bottom of this light right here, right? They were big, 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 big animals. So let's say I'm an Ice Age hunter and I'm running up, no matter what continent you're on, it's the Ice Age and we're all hunting giant buffaloes. And, and woolly mammoths and stuff like that, right? How safe would it be, be for me to walk up to this huge animal and poke it with a stick? Not safe at all. I probably, and the, the fact that I'm gonna have to poke him several times, because you know, just one ain't gonna do it, pull the bottle. And you attach it? And then you attach it. So eventually, I got in trouble last time I actually threw this in here, so I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> Um, this happens to be a tooth, but it could be any sort of little wooden peg or, or whatever you have on there. Then you, you can take, now you don't have to have these handles on, but this one happens to have it. And you set your hole right to that tooth. I'm still getting used to my bifocals, so bear with me. There we go. And now 
if I just threw this spear with just my arm, all I have is a leverage and strength in my arm and chest. Now, I did a lot of push-ups in the army. Don't ask why. <laughs> but I could probably throw this spear with enough velocity, enough power to penetrate that buffalo's thick hide and get into a vital organ, maybe from here to that wall, to that window. Um, increase the velocity of my projectile. Now I can throw this thing 100 yards with enough power to penetrate through that thick hide, through some bone, into some muscle, maybe some vital organs, and we're all having buffalo burgers tonight. Can I move it too fast? No. There you go. Oh, this one? Okay. Well, this cup, this cup was used for, uh, for chocolate. Yeah. This cup was used for chocolate and it, uh, this cup was used for chocolate and back then instead of putting sugar in chocolate, they used it with chilies. So it was literally hot chocolate, like the spicy hot. And, and this design is chocolate. I thought it was rattlesnake skin. Yeah. Here, here you can see evidence of corn. Here you can see a corn print. Wait. Here you can see evidence of corn being placed on there. And that's because uh, they stored the corn inside. I think, is it dirt? Wait. And that's because they stored the corn inside. What? Inside two pieces. Is it two pieces? Or... No, 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 two pieces of clay. Yeah. And that's because they stored corn inside pieces of clay or whatever this is. So that it was used as Tupperware. This is what they use some they use some of these items to hunt including the obsidian because they were really sharp uh, and they attached them to the end of the spear Oh Wow we got them all good job all right let me give you the Choose one thing from the basket. These are native made. No. Uh, no. No. If they were, we would put them in the case. <laughs> you like that, huh? Thanks. Thank you for doing the game. Do you know what this is made of? No, I don't. I'm not sure. Some kind of a sharp. Um, it's, it is definitely yeah, right. When you finish the scavenger hunt, you get a prize, and one of them that brother chose is this. It's like an arrowhead. It's like an arrowhead. Okay, what? Yeah. Oh. Here's a here's a picture of a guy interacting with cattle. Wait. <coughs> oh. I really want. I think oh, you're yeah. waiting oh. for this. I want oh, everything. Right. Let's, let's pick up a toy and play around with it real quick. Wait, should you tell them you carry it? Okay. Right, right, and go. Over here are Native American tools, and it says use at your own risk, so I think they're real. Oh, yeah, we did that before with. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Okay. Can you, can you hold this? Wait, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this. I think you use your hand. Watch out, Jacka. Do you do this? I think it's like this. Wait, come on. No, yeah, Whoa. Oh, wait, yeah. Wait, got you. Hand out of the way. There. I think it's like this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't touch the arrowhead. It'll poke you. All right, here. Two, three, All right. Wait, I want to record some stuff about this. All right. Go. All of the bows and their equipment, what, a lot of their bows and equipment have feathers at the end. And it's not this one, but if there are eagle feathers, only Native Americans are allowed to collect them and they must get a permit. Also for this bow, this also for this bow you can see the inside. So 
basically on the outside this is animal skin and they glued it to the wood i think the glue is made out of animal product too right watch out for the bow and the biscuit yeah and and then all you have to do is just pull this back and it fires a very long distance and go our next stop what our next stop is the Museum of Indigenous People. Uh, uh, oh, now we're at. Now we are at the Museum of Indigenous People. Our last stop is the Museum of Indigenous People. Okay, and, and that is the. And that is the wait. Oh yeah, and that is the Museum of Indigenous People. All right, tell us your favorite part. Yeah. How about the bingo that you because you got a prize? Yeah. My favorite part was the bingo that you could do. And then you get a sweet little prize like this. Sweet little prize. Okay. Yeah. And I like seeing all the artifacts, especially the tools that they use for hunting, because hunting is a big part of the Native American lifestyle. Okay. Uh, oh. And and the most important and the most important fact is that when they used the animals, nothing went to waste. They would use every single last bit of the animal for whatever products, including jewelry. Well, no, including gifts, including gifts and meat and and, and clothes and glue. and glue. Okay, that's it. On to the next step, and then that's it. The two ending. Okay. All right, that's that's it for our, that's it for our day. That's it for our day. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for more videos. Bye. Okay, on to the next stop. On to the next stop.